Well, good morning, everyone. This is Deacon Up coming to you from Power in Unity Ministries. How I missed this this uh, yesterday so much, but <clears throat> my son is over here working on the house, and um, there just was not a space. So, but today I have come to you with the word that he gave me yesterday, and it is a little bit different, but it is exactly what he wants us to hear so that we are encouraged. It doesn't matter the number. It matters the power of God that is in each one of us to perform those things that he asks us to perform. I love him so much. I almost just want to start singing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Praise his holy name. Hear what he has to say. It's amazing how he puts things together. Things are changing fast and furious, suddenlies and quicklies. Watch the enemy coming and cunning and devious. Gifts I am about to impart and a new path and a new start. You've been asking, you've been waiting, you've been looking, you've been anticipating. Come on, people. He's answering. I am in the whirlwind. He spoke of a whirlwind yesterday, uh, Friday, wasn't it? He was in the whirlwind, and remember, it came down, and it crashed into the ground, and when it got closer, you could see the angels had come with gifts and with messages and with talents and with with uh, treasures, my Lord and my God. Never forget where you've been. Stay always at the foot of the cross, and remember that I am the boss. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cutting the loop and loosening the knot is releasing all that heaven's got. Ooh, hallelujah. Heaven's gifts that have been on hold are about to your life unfold. He's talking to you, my Lord and my God. I see your heart and I see the smile on your face as you gear up for this different pace. Stay ready, set, go. But no time to waste. Remember to let me make the pace. The enemy from inside and out will attack. Be assured, I will bring America back. Hear what he's saying between the lines. He's telling us something much deeper than what you just hear in words. All will then clearly see. She is cho a chosen beacon for me. Hear this line again. Get ready, set, go. No time to waste, but remember to let me set the pace. The enemy from within and out will attack. Be assured, I will bring America back. All will then clearly see she is a chosen nation for me. And then he speaks directly to us as human beings. Children, I know your flesh gets weary and weak, but through it all, you have stayed humble and meek. He sees it all, people. When you feel you may say something wrong to me, just begin singing a song. I actually did that, was it yesterday? Or day before yesterday, I was out something and devil was just going through my mind like crazy. And I just started quoting scripture. I just started singing a song. And you know what? He's fled from the scene. Hallelujah. Come sit with me. There is much I want you to see. I know where I'm taking you, teaching you to wear my shoes. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God forevermore. I know where I'm taking you. I'm teaching you to wear my shoes. He doesn't send us out there unequipped. My Lord and my God. Many changes yet to come before your work is done. 
World leaders uniting, changing gear, putting on vestures, no dread and no fear. Hear what he's saying. World leaders. He's not just talking about America. He's talking about the world. The nations of the world no longer are going to live in fear and dread. They are going to put on that vest. And put on another gear that has no fear. And that is the gear of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the mantle of God the Father. The enemy, because of this, is preparing for a full attack. Fear not, it is I that has America's back. I am your strength, your sword, and your shield. I am the wheel within the wheel. My Lord and my God, how awesome is our Lord. All things I promised you will see before you come home to live with me. So if you think you live too long and there ain't, there's no way. Boy, my mother would turn over in her grave <laughs> if she was there, but she's in the arms of Jesus. Uh, <laughs> she's a, she don't like you to say ain't. But anyway, let me, let me rephrase that. All things are promised you will see before you come home to live with me. Praise be unto God. If you think you're too old, or you've waited too long, or God can't do this now, and he can't use you like he could before, think again. Think again, because he said, all things I promised you will see before you come home to live with me. Now hear this. America, a beacon for me, shall shine. New treasures in the ground you will find. Wonder what those treasures are. Keep your eyes focused on me and amazing things you will see. As I begin moving things around, you will see chaos calming down. Praise God for that. Hallelujah. The enemy will not stop trying to break the chain. Just keep on calling on Jesus name. Come on, people. That's how you win the victory. You stay at the side of the Lord. Praying saints will reverse the attack and Satan's plans will melt like wax. My Lord and my God, the power of prayer, the power of praise, the power of trust. The enemy will not stop trying to break the chain. Just keep on calling on Jesus' name. Praying saints will reverse the attack and Satan's plans will melt like wax. How much plainer can you make it? Hallelujah. We've got power over our enemy, people. All your eyes see and your ears hear is not correct. My angels are keeping the enemy in check. The gates of hell cannot prevail because I, your Lord, cannot fail. How much plainer can he make it? Hallelujah. From the top of the mountain, you can clearly see fresh flowing water from heaven for thee. Time to discern the signs in the weather, angels and men fighting together. As truth reveals, I shine my light. It will hardly be a battle or a fight. As truth reveals, I shine my light. It will hardly be a battle, hardly a fight. What does it say in John, the 14th chapter? I am the light and the life in every man. The darkness could not comprehend the light. So what happened? It ran in fright. Hallelujah. As in days of old, I fought with a few. The enemy beaten, I make all things new. Hear what he's saying. It is not how many, where, or who. It is knowing, knowing, knowing I will always bring you through, my Lord and my God. The minute I heard those last two lines, the Lord said, pull out 
Gideon in Judges, the seventh, seventh chapter, and speak to the people about what I did, the miraculous. Hallelujah. Get up. Uh, uh, Gideon had put out a fleece before the Lord. He knew that God was going to give him the, um, give him, win the battle of the Midianites and the Amicalites. Is that how you pronounce it? But he, you know, the Lord says, if you need reassuring, you know, go into the camp the night before, he says, and just listen. Take your servant with you. I'm paraphrasing, you know, because it says in, in, uh, I'm going from th cha chapter 7, 13 through 22, where it says they describe the Mennonites as being numerous as locust camels without number as the sands of the sea in multitude. They were so many more of them than there was in Gideon's army. And yet Gideon's army had what well, I think it was 35,000. But the Lord gave him something. He went in there and he said, and he heard one of the Amicalites giving a dream he had. Hear this dream. There was a man telling a dream to his companion. He said, I had a dream. To my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to the tent and struck it so that it fell and overturned and the tent collapsed. Now, the, the barley bread was the cheapest and most humble made bread. Okay, that's why the barley bread. Okay, you, you take that army of the Midianites and the Amicalites against the armies of Gideon, and they were like the barley bread. Come on, come on, hear what he's saying. Hear, hear this, hear this. Okay, so he said, I... In my, uh, to my surprise, a loaf of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian. It came to the tent. It struck it so that it fell overturned and the tent collapsed. Listen to the interpretation. Then his companion answered and said, this is nothing else but the sword of Gideon, the son of Joaz, a man of Israel. Hear what God has to say. Into his hand, God has delivered Midian and the whole camp. And so it was when Gideon heard and the telling of the dream and its interpretation that he worshiped. That was the first thing he did. People of God, we need to understand when God comes on the scene, when he gives you a dream, he gives you a vision. He gives you insight to how you are going to win something. We need to stop, take time to worship our Lord and King. He turned to the camp of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord has delivered the camp of Midian into your hand, my Lord and my God. And there was a plan. There was a plan. Praise be unto God. And that plan was, we're going to do the second part here now. When he, when he heard this, God gave him the plan. He says, you don't want people that are going to be afraid in this war. And he says, I want no one else to be able to get my glory. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to tell those um, who are afraid that it is no, nothing against them, but to go home, to go home. 22,000 of his army went home, my Lord and my God. The rest of them that were there, he says, go down to the river and tell them to drink. And he says, those who... Uh, who, who drink, the, put their head down, get on their knees and drink. They're not part of the army. But those who lap the water and they're watching as they're lapping the water. He says, that is your army. Everybody went home but 300 people. And God had a purpose and a plan. And the, so 300, 300 were coming against these Amicalites and these Mennonites who were numerous as locusts, and you know how they how they are, and the camels without number as the sands of the sea that they had down there in that valley. 300. But God had a plan, a supernatural plan. He had them divide into three groups, 300, 100 each, and he said they were to take a trumpet, 
they would have taken an empty pitcher and put a, a torch in the empty pitcher. So he had a trumpet, a pitcher, and swords to go to battle with. Hallelujah. Not swords. Trumpet, pitcher, and torches. He didn't even mention swords. <laughs> Come on, people. Hear what he's saying. And then he said, Look at me and do likewise. Watch, and when I come to the edge of the camp, you shall do as I do. When I blow my trumpet, and I and all who are with me, then you also will blow your trumpets on the side of the whole camp and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. My Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. He hollered. They were echoing around the whole camp that was in the valley. Oh, can you imagine when you get the words of the Lord echoing through your system? What the enemy does? Oh, how am I shun of Makai? I said, well, watch what I do and follow me. When I blow my trumpet, I will shout and you follow suit. The sword of God, the Holy Lord and Gideon. And watch what happens. When they blew their trumpets, the Lord said every man's sword, sword against his companion throughout the whole camp. They killed and turned on one another and the rest fled. And you can read the rest of the story in Judges 7 and 8. My Lord and my God. Those few verses, 13 through 22, tells us how he trusted God. This is a lesson for us people pointing fingers back at me to believe what he says and when he didn't even ask for the confirmation, but he knew Gideon's heart. Even though he told him, I've given you this, this, this is in your my hands. I've given this to you. He said, but if you want no more proof, go down. And then he had him hear the dream and the interpretation. And he knew that he knew that he knew. But then he comes back and, and the Lord tells him, you got to get rid of all those that are afraid. And you got to get rid of those who are not watching while they're drinking the water. You got to have just the ones that are bold and strong to go into this battle. Remember what a few things back he said that there were people that he'd been preparing for strategic, strategic places to do this battle. And remember how I was asking Lord, why, why are, are we not in this battle? Because he said, I prepared them for this battle. That's what he did here. He prepared Gideon's army for this particular battle. He had the right warriors. So he didn't leave you out on purpose. He left you out for a time such as this. Hallelujah. And then there was a dream. There was an interpretation. There was a receiving and a worship in obedience. And then came the victory. My Lord and my God, what a lesson on this Gideon's army, my Lord, have mercy. Help us to see. Pick up our trumpets, our, our, our pitchers, and our torches and go forth. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Glorious Lord and Savior, we lift your holy name high for all to see. You are the God of all eternity. It is you who causes the earth to turn and the waters to churn. You put the stars in place and created the whole human race. You are amazing, full of mercy and grace. You assure us you are always near and there is no reason to fear. That you always have our back from the devil's vicious attack. You are always watching over those we love as your peace rains down from above. You tell us you are our guide and you guard our back. Is there anything too hard for you? You design the seasons and weather and tell us to pray and fight together.
That unity is the key to every victory. You are God and there is no other. With your grace, us here, you always cover. May we always stay pliable in your hand and listen for your command. Go here, go there, and do not despair. We come to worship you, our Lord and King, knowing you are in charge of everything. May we lift our hands high for all to see you are the God of all creativity. Amen and amen. If that wasn't a job of creativity by redoing the army of Gideon, I don't know what was. Showing God was supreme. He won the war. He received all the glory through our obedience and trusting him. My Lord and my God. I ran over a little today, but I had to do what God says. I love you so much, and I'm so sorry I missed yesterday. I know I'm not supposed to apologize. Y'all tell me that all the time, but it hurts me. It hurts me. I want to get here and give you something from God every day if I possibly can. Today may be another hard day. My son is really trying to get a lot of this stuff done today, and it's, but, you know, God's in charge. If he wants it done, he'll give me a place to do it. Thank you. And thank you for listening. Thank you for passing it on. Thank you for the thumbs up. And thank you for getting people to subscribe. I love you. But God loves you so much more.